Welcome to the Legion Strength and Conditioning Podcast. You can check us out at legionsc.com or follow us on Instagram at legion.sc. So there was recently a Reddit thread asking the question of how to go from just sort of doing CrossFit in classes and, you know, being someone who's pretty good and able to do a lot of stuff to actually moving on to competing, which is a pretty interesting question, right? Because a lot of folks start doing CrossFit, not necessarily as a competitive pursuit. You know, it's like, okay, I want to work out. I want to have some fun. This seems like a cool thing to do. Maybe I'll look better with my shirt off and my friend is doing it. Sounds great. And as they start doing it, they're like, oh, I get numbers associated with my performance. I see people lifting certain weights. Oh, it's this weird thing people are doing on rings. And people kind of get this itch to, to be able to do more stuff, right? And you start doing more stuff and you realize like, oh, I can actually kind of do these pull-ups and my time was pretty good on this workout. And there's a few people maybe in my gym or who I see online who are going to these competitions. And people kind of like, keep slowly leveling up more and more into the idea of like, maybe, maybe I could compete. Maybe I could actually do a competition, but sort of taking that jump from someone who's just doing classes and treating their training more as, you know, a, a, a loose recreational activity, not something that they're super, super serious about into like, okay, I'm actually literally trying to compete in this as a sport. There's, there's a big jump there somewhere. And you know, it's, it's definitely challenging to figure out what should be done to, to make that jump. Right. And, you know, someone asked this question on Reddit, very good question. And unsurprisingly to folks who, uh, you know, potentially have read Reddit ever in their lives, the, the responses and the advice that this individual was given, you know, it was just not so good. There was some, there was some pretty bad advice on this Reddit thread. Shocking, I know. So we figured that it might be worthwhile to give some advice that we consider to be potentially better, very arrogant of us. Um, but you know, I guess we're just going to allow our heads to swell to, um, a totally disproportionate size and just get out there and say, Hey, this is maybe what you should think about if you're trying to go from just doing CrossFit casually to doing CrossFit competitively. So what do we think? What should people do? I, I'm going to read the list. Um, okay, so you have to have great training partners, a well-outfitted facility to train, dedicated CrossFit coach, preferably one with a triathlon background, dedicated weightlifting coach, a nutritionist, a physical therapist that you trust, access to recovery tools such as salt floats, cryo chambers, pool or hot tub, a sports psychologist, and someone who will support you until you acquire enough sponsors to support yourself. So for this individual who's making that transition from classes to competing, that's quite a lot. However, part of me does think that it could be embedded in some of uh, Matt Frazier's profile. He has a weightlifting background. He has uh, Mr. Hinshaw, who's a who's a uh, triathlon, has a triathlon background, right? He's um, probably got a hot tub or a pool or something like that. Um, but generally speaking, you don't need as many things, uh, as that, and you probably can make that transition, uh, a lot easier. I think the, what were the, what were the three areas that we came up with as sort of the, uh, the main things that people have issues with are being, uh, not strong enough, not fit enough, or not necessarily having enough skills. And in fairness, most of that is sorted out by having a cryo chamber. <laughs> yeah i agree that's where i learned how to do muscle ups <laughs> <laughs> is that the reason why the kip swing so you know tight compact yeah. and efficient <laughs> yeah when the rings are hanging down into the chamber you don't want to touch the sides you got to be you got to be tight on that cool. <laughs> well, anyway let's get back into uh <laughs> <laughs> Let's get away from Reddit. I'm going to close this tab. Otherwise, this is going to... I'm keeping it open. Some, some, <laughs> some more disruption. Um, but yeah, just generally, the, the, the main thing that you're going to need um, is, is, is a plan in place. Um, and as well as that, I do think that you also have to just have to have time in the... And I know I've said this before, but you have to have time in the sport. You have to have time um, training with, with, a, with a goal in mind and having a plan towards something 
Um, I do think that the, one of the biggest things that people do need to, to, to change, and this is one thing that I've personally seen, is just a, a bit of a shift in how you approach training. Um, quite often, I think that when people are going through group classes, uh, and it's understandable because it's, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, experience that's attached to group classes is very much about, you know, the interaction that you're having in the day-to-day -day experience, right? Um, that's sort of what keeps people going. <clears throat> But if people are able to start to look at their training as a little bit more of, okay, I'm now training for the future or something that's going to occur in the future, and then they can have a little bit more uh, understanding around some of the transferability that occurs in training. So, you know, when you are doing one activity, you are probably going to be working towards several other uh, activities, not necessarily directly, but there's definitely a lot of things that work together uh, and it's, uh, you know, nothing happens in a vacuum. Uh, and I think quite often and sort of from the Reddit post uh, or the answer to the Reddit post, you obviously have someone there who's pretty much just dissected every element of, uh, of, the, of the sport or everything that's needed and just created an action point based off of that. Whereas I think that you can make that transition a lot easier but there definitely just does need to be a bit more of a general understanding of the training process, um, you know, uh, incremental progression week on week, you know, not trying to just hit every single training session as a, okay, this is my competition. I've got a, you know, for these uh, four sets of five back squat today, it's a, it's a new five rep max, right? Because they're probably going to be at the, the, you know, somewhere within their training age where those things don't necessarily happen. Um, and I think that a lot of people are just trying to, they're either trying to uh, create re new records, they're trying to, you know, break the, in the internet with some Instagram post, or they're trying to just like, you know, get a new record on their, the, the gym's whiteboard every single training session. Um, and then there's not necessarily much attention being paid to just like the, the long-term process. Okay, where's this going to take me in six months' time, uh, a year's time, et cetera, et cetera. And I think one thing that, that also, again, having read that Reddit thread, um, there's a misconception on volume requirements or how well people can adapt to volume. And you know, people assume that games athletes are kind of four, five, six hours of training a day. Um, and the reality is most of them aren't going to be doing that. There's probably some that are, um, but people think that's required and also that they can just jump right to that without building up in any way that they're just going to be automatically able to handle that kind of volume um, and I think it's that's probably the biggest downfall of a lot of people when they first start is oh I've got to you know do three strength pieces and some skill work and like two or three conditioning pieces every day um, and it's just not not necessary for them yeah I think that there's a um to, to your point, John, right? There's a, there mis, there's a misconception and a misunderstanding of what the different layers are of potentially becoming more competitive, right? In the, in the intro, I sort of laid out this, this avatar of someone who is kind of gradually eased into the idea of like, oh, maybe I actually want to do this as a sport, right? And that that individual, you know, to, to the, to the, to the post that, that Luke was citing, you know, that person isn't necessarily saying, great, it is now my goal to win the CrossFit Games. Let me check every single box that I can possibly check to make this happen, right? That they're, they're just trying to figure out, okay, I've basically just been showing up to this activity without any real intention or thought behind it. And I've kind of eased into the idea of maybe wanting to take this more seriously. Like, what are my, what are my next steps? And you know, that it, that it, 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 it's it's kind of like a messy landscape of information because if you start poking around, you see a lot of stuff that's designed for people who are already at a pretty high level who are trying to actually get better, right? And that's a totally different game, right? Someone who is a pretty good athlete who wants to take it up a notch and qualify for the CrossFit Games or qualify for a sanctional, maybe regionals if they come back, that that's not the same question as, okay, I'm pretty good and I want to start competing versus I'm a person who has just been coming to classes is relatively new in terms of my exposure to the sport. And I'm just like trying to figure out where the hell do I even start? Right. So 
I think that Luke, what you were touching on is probably one of the most important, like tangible things for someone to think about, which is essentially if you're going from this phase of, I basically just been showing up and doing whatever is programmed at my gym. And I have an idea of what I can and can't do. And, you know, I've gotten good enough that it's realistic for me to think that maybe I should start quote unquote competing. Probably the most important thing for that individual to do is to start actually having intention with what they're doing when training, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that they have to stop going to classes, that they need to, you know, hire a coach and, and follow an individualized training program. Like, yes, you can absolutely do that. Um, you know, I mean, there, there's plenty of folks out there as well. Um, James Fitzgerald from OPEX talks about, okay, if you actually want to seriously compete, you need to spend a long time building up you know, basically just a, a, a massive aerobic base and tissue tolerance to handle dynamic contractions, which is probably true. But there's also an element of like, okay, well, not everyone is like, I've decided that I want to compete in CrossFit, and I'm starting from wherever. And then this is my 10 year journey to get there, right? That the people don't necessarily make a decision like that. They kind of like ease into stuff, don't totally realize what they're doing, figure out like, oh, okay, I'm actually pretty good at this. Maybe I should take it more seriously, try some more stuff, maybe have some setbacks and are like, okay, I've had a few setbacks. What can I do to improve based upon that? Right. That it's kind of messy. And it's like a, you know, a squiggly line of like back and forth and figuring out what they should be doing to, um, to make something work. Right. So all that to say, if we circle back to this individual who's like, all right, cool, I've done some classes, I'm pretty good at this, you know, I'm not necessarily strong enough to to lift the quote unquote RX weights at the the various competitions I see. I can do some gymnastics stuff, but I still haven't really figured out a muscle up. I still haven't really figured out how to um, to handstand walk effectively when I'm tired. Uh, I get tired in my workouts, even though I can beat a lot of people in classes. You know, the times that I see people putting up in the open or whatever are completely absurd and make no sense to me. Right. So what should that person do? Well, if they figure out how to actually train with some sort of intention and say, all right, this is my focus and this is what I'm actually working on. I think that's the most important tangible step that they can take, right? So to, to kind of um, summarize this, let's say that person is is nowhere near strong enough to actually do quote unquote competitive weights, right? And that doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be hitting the 315 clean and jerk at the end of an open workout. Let's just say that they're a, a male athlete who wants to be able to do pretty well on some stuff and their max clean is 225. Like, okay, if you want to be able to hit a 225 pound barbell in some sort of conditioning workout, like you should probably be able to clean at least like 265, 275, just to make that realistic for you. So you're not strong enough to do that. What are you going to do? Let's actually have some sort of structured strength work. And a lot of people are just going to default to doing classes and maybe tacking on some sort of, you know, catalyst athletics, weightlifting program, maybe a five through one squatting program on top of that. And in the past, I know that we've actually sort of like spoken out against that really that a little bit and like, Hey, you guys can't just start like stacking programs on top of each other. Uh, it doesn't necessarily result in the kind of adaptation that you want, but like, honestly, in this case, I'm kind of okay with that, right? That this person is just doing classes, just trying to figure out what to do. They've never really trained with an actual intention. They just sort of show up and do what's on the board and record their time and are like, yeah, okay, that was pretty good. Right. And if that person just sort of actually takes the mindset of like, my squat is 275, I want my clean to be 275. I should probably be able to get my back squat up to maybe like 315. And then maybe I can at least get close to cleaning 275. I don't really know. Right. And like whether or not those numbers are accurate doesn't even kind of matter. It's just actually having the intention of like, I'm here. I need to be here. What can I do to potentially change that? I'm not super bought into this, but I do have an additional 45 minutes, two or three days a week. I found this five through one program online. I can do it before my class. My gym allows me to do that. Like Great. That's a, that, that's like a totally fine starting point. Even if that isn't like the literal best thing that you can do. Yeah. Like I think the, uh, I think when we've spoken in somewhat sort of bashed stacking programs on, on top of each other, I think it's, it's mainly been with like those people who are a little bit more advanced who just, yeah, yeah, who, yeah, yeah. Who, who just, who are following already a high volume program and like, well, I need to do this extra or and and we and, and what I've noticed is I see that really uh, quite often now with endurance work because I think that people have this sort of association that you know low intensity work on the rower or on the bike isn't going to take too much out of their body and so they can just do it um, whether people actually do it or not you know that's that's a different question like it's it's uh, if if people have the time 
Uh, but circling back to sort of your point, Todd, I do think that like some gateway between, okay, I'm going to be doing classes and some additional stuff. Some Something like that is really important. Um, and I think that people really, you know, sort of have to have a bit of a mindset of, What's the lowest hanging fruit? Like, what's the easiest thing that I can take care of right now that's then going to take me to where I want to go? Um, and I think that a lot of people, you know, through, I think just, this is quite maybe just uh, something about sort of social media and we see the, the fact that it's like a, a young sport and the fact that we sort of live in a, a world of, you know, where, you know, people have got to be special and everything like that. A lot of people do start off with these huge goals in mind and it's like if you have not competed you need to go to a one-day competition like a local competition um, and the training needs to reflect that as well it needs to look as if you are doing that and then you need to be like okay well what's the next step maybe you're going to travel to do a competition over two days you do six workouts and your training is probably going to need to reflect that as well and over time, you'll probably start to find a bit of a groove after a couple of years whereby you may now be on a uh, individualized program, you may be following some blog, some training group, and you have circled in your calendar, you know, three points within the year where you do a local competition, you do a competition that you may have to travel to, to a different state or to a different country. Um, and then you have uh, the open or you you know like um, the international qualifier as well at the moment but i do think that the training has to sort of reflect that and a lot of the time people just sort of feel that they can just do straight away they can just jump into um you know some some blog style program or or whatever and and those are you got to realize that those are built off of the idea of okay well we're going to do all of these movements uh over the course of the the next two weeks and we've also got to do them in a variety of different ways where we're practicing the skill but then we're also doing them in a bit of a conditioning piece like quite often these things are a little bit more about sort of ticking boxes and those people who sort of survive and go through them really well become quite successful um you know this is not necessarily bashing blog program like this is something i did for a, a number of years before i hired a coach um but i do think that like that that you, you have to have some um some transition period uh of training and then also the competitions um and just also just trying to expose yourself to different environments um, and just trying to get some practice in. I think that one, one, uh, one mindset that I see quite often is that people are always training for something in a couple of months' time or there's always this, this, this big grand goal and there's, not, you know, there's this reluctancy almost to do anything that's going to sort of uh, take away from that. And what I mean by take away from that is sort of... if. For instance, someone is doing a, a throwdown type session with their friends on a Saturday. It's like, well, should I be actually working towards some progression in my strength or my skills? And it's like, no, you shouldn't, because that 20 minute AMRAP that you're going to do, that's going to, that, that's a progression in the sport. That's a progression in your sports practice. That's a, the idea of, uh, you know, doing a, doing a practice uh, a match of your sport is it, it, trying to give you that experience. So, where some people can just look at training a little bit too, uh, you could say a little bit too much down the lens of like strength and conditioning and everything working towards something. You also have to understand that the sport itself is needs to be practiced often enough so you can have those experiences in training, which then highlight the areas where you need to work on. So you understand, okay, well, this came up and this sort of, you know, shocked me, quote unquote, or, you know, you're now training with a new group of people who may be a little bit more advanced than you. That's a good thing, right? Because then you can sort of see what they have, uh, you know, as a group, not necessarily, you know, going by individual to individual, but you can see what they have as a group where you may be lacking and you need to be like, okay, well, obviously I need to have this, uh, you know, one element improved drastically for me to be able to perform a lot better on average amongst this group. And going back to one of the earlier points you made there, Luke, about the low hanging fruit for people. Um, I think when people follow those kind of blog programs, um, I think it's very easy at the start for them to get a good response to that. So you take someone almost equivalent to when someone first starts doing CrossFit or some kind of training program coming from a completely untrained state. It kind of doesn't matter too much what they do. They're going to make some kind of progress. Um, just because they're going from zero to to something, um, and I think you could you could say the same for people moving from a class program to something that is a little bit more focused. So someone who 
Uh, let's say they do like the aerobic capacity running uh, program that they have. It doesn't matter too much for it, for them to do a blog program that isn't specifically for them because they could follow the aerobic capacity running uh, program and it's going to get them results. They're going to improve their running capacity. They're going to improve their pacing regardless of how how like closely those uh, workouts suit their strengths or weaknesses within running. Um, and I think the same goes to a lot of other blog programs as well. If someone is going from a regular CrossFit class into a weightlifting program from a blog, chances are they're still going to make some good improvements on their weightlifting. And there needs to be that certain level of training or training years to where that you truly need the individualized stuff to really to make that same kind of progress. Yeah, I think that um, the idea of the difference between like what's the ideal best practice way to potentially improve versus what's a more realistic journey from what we've seen from people is really interesting to to discuss, right? And that really is so much of the points that both of you were just talking about, right? That like we mentioned before, if you have someone who has said, hey, listen, you know, I'm starting here. This is where I'm at right now. I don't necessarily have the strength. I don't necessarily have the skills, but I'm interested in potentially taking this more seriously. I'm willing to dedicate five years to it. You know, that 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 individual, like you can lay out a progression of like, great, you're going to spend a year or two not even really doing a whole lot of quote unquote CrossFit, maybe some skill work, et cetera, but really focusing on building the base to be able to support the type of training that's necessary to compete in the sport. And that, you know, that that's probably like the quote unquote best way to progress someone. And you actually find that a lot of people who are competitive in the sport do have a background that aligns with that. They just didn't necessarily know that that's what they were doing, right? That they had previous sporting background and potentially a history as just kind of like gym rats doing a variety of different bodybuilding-esque activities, et cetera, before they ended up moving into the more um, like dynamic sporting aspect of CrossFit. So, you know, they sort of stumbled into that trajectory without it being something that they planned. And, you know, if someone does come to you as a coach and, and has that as their goal and they're willing to sort of buy into the process, like, yeah, you can absolutely try to progress someone in a much more, quote unquote, best practices way. But, you know, sort of like we're saying, a lot of people, that's that's not going to be what ends up actually happening for them. It's going to be a much messier process where they're just kind of trying to figure stuff out that they don't necessarily know what's going on. They don't necessarily have a clear goal. They're just kind of like bouncing from um, thing to thing as far as like, okay, I'm actually a little bit better at this now maybe I should be here so I want to I want to sort of focus in on the idea of potentially working with other people who also have you know the goal of being somewhat competitive because that's something that we've seen a lot is that in in many gyms there's not necessarily uh, a coach or a group of coaches or whatever who have a lot of background and understanding on how to progress people into the more competitive aspects of the sport so people are left you know posting questions on Reddit and trying to sort of piece things together from podcasts, et cetera, which is honestly kind of fine, right? Because you, you you end up with these small groups of competitive people who on the weekends will sort of throw down together. It sort of becomes a combination of a little bit of training and a little bit of social stuff. And even though these groups are often like a hotbed of bad ideas, right, that a lot of the stuff people are doing kind of doesn't make any sense. And it's sort of haphazard and it's just kind of throwing things together. The reality is, is that just by being exposed to other people with a similar goal and trying to actually work on it, you'll start to figure out, Luke, like you said, what you actually do struggle with, where your weaknesses are, and what you're actually potentially better than you think with. So I, I do think that it's really important for people to just kind of like start getting their feet wet in some capacity or another. And, you know, most areas you can at least find a gym that has a handful of competitors who get together at some point and like quote unquote throw down, right? That if you do some combination of finding other people who are attempting to compete in any form or another, right? Maybe sign up for a low pressure local competition if and when those return in this COVID era and then actually have intention on your training sessions, you know, you're saying, okay, like I'm going to keep doing my classes, but I'm going to add in some work specifically focused on figuring out how to figure to, to, to do handstand pushups. I'm going to add in some work specifically focused on figuring out how to actually get, you know, my shoulders in a position to receive a squat snatch. I'm going to add some extra work to figure out how I can actually get my deadlift heavy enough that, you know, if there is a two 
325 bar or a 315 bar that I'm not just completely screwed um, based upon that showing up. So a little bit of intention and just like being in an environment with other people competing is sort of like, I think the, the bare minimum for actually like making that transition from just like class member to competitor, even again, even if everything you're doing is like kind of stupid and wrong, like that's okay. At some point, if you're able to figure out like, okay, this is, you know, has been going well and now I'm struggling and I feel like we're just doing a bunch of volume that makes no sense and my back kind of hurts all the time and I still can't actually get the transition on my muscle ups and you know I'm just like beating myself into the ground and I feel like shit constantly like that's a learning experience that most people have to go through and hopefully you know you have enough awareness to figure out like this doesn't seem to be going right maybe I don't need to just try harder and like do ROMWOD maybe I need to actually have a program that makes sense yeah and I, I think there's a there's, there's a lot of what what ends up happening what you described now is it's just it's information and you know if if you're messing around with stuff and you're making a load of mistakes that's giving you feedback to then make better decisions in the future and i do feel that like um i know you know for for people who like us who've been in the sport for for quite a while it was sort of okay it almost felt like that people who were coaches back in the day or you know, I sort of say back in the day, maybe like five years ago, there was usually this interest in the competition aspect of it. But I do see that now, as 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 the as as CrossFit and as the the sport sort of develops, you you have now people who are more specialist, and you have people who uh, are coaches at CrossFit gyms who don't really have an interest in it. You know, they might they may enjoy weightlifting or something like that, but they don't really have an interest in it. So sometimes it can be hard to find that sort of guidance. Uh, and that sort of objective opinion around it but you know that i do think that training in a group can be really really helpful um and just sort of like playing around with stuff but um to sort of talk about the, the the idea of sort of messing around with stuff i think um when you do that you can sometimes actually start to tap into things that you weren't necessarily able to do before so one of the challenges that you know I, I experience with remote coaching, and I'm sure you guys do as well, is sometimes just based off of myself wanting to make sure that the athlete stays safe and that they are working and and and, and being doing things that are appropriate for it, for them. Sometimes they may be training at a level which that they actually could push a little bit harder, but but because that they say, for instance, have got comfortable within a certain uh, you know sort of. Uh, a certain collective of paces when they're on the bike or on the row or you know or, or certain numbers or just a certain intensity that they push or you know because they've sort of found their groove and they're starting to you know make uh, they've made some gains off of that sometimes there's there's an element of you actually need to let that person just go with the flow and fly a little bit just to sort of see what they can do realize their potential and then all of a sudden you re recalibrate all of those uh things that you were working on before um you know so i encourage my athletes to train with other people you know once a week or you know i like to put out like a, a throwdown style workout and it literally has no guides on pacing or anything like that it's just a figure this out do it expose yourself if you mess up cool that's information that's great because the best place to mess up is going to be in the gym it's not going to be in a competition setting and you learn from those experiences and then if you start to push and you do really really well and you all of a sudden can hold your chest bar pull-ups for bigger sets you can push a little bit harder on those bar facing burpees you're trying out this new uh you know step over jump around technique that you've been practicing and training and now all of a sudden you did it for the whole workout you know, those types of things happen when you're potentially either against someone or you're against the clock and you don't necessarily have too many uh, constraints around your training. And, and I, I do think that, you know, for, for myself personally, I know when I was training and I was a little bit younger and stupid, yeah, I would just push things to a, a stupid intensity sometimes, but I would also tap into something which was like, okay, actually, this went really, really well. You <laughs> know, it didn't necessarily happen all the time, but there are, there's definitely those sort of, uh, this sort of exploratory around training and around your performance that does need to occur, especially if you've gone through, you know, a couple of training cycles that, are, you know, very much based on 
uh, accumulating volume and building up uh, things in their sort of most purest form and you're looking to sort of see how that translates into the sport uh, and into CrossFit itself, you, you've got to have those experiences. And I do think that like a group training environment, um, uh, you know, a small group of people who are thrown down on a regular basis, that can usually provide that for, for some people. Yeah, I think that there's um, a, a lot of insight in what you just said there, Luke, that we, again, we've we've criticized a lot of bad ideas and training and just throwing programs together and trying to do too much stuff in the past. And I think that is a, a real danger for a lot of athletes who are already at a reasonably high level. But what you were saying just helped me sort of crystallize something in my head, which is that you know, for people who are either really, really good, right, just doing a lot of stupid stuff that doesn't make any sense and just throwing things together is fine because they're super resilient and they can adapt to anything and the sport is a mess. And if they just start doing a bunch of stuff that doesn't make any sense and they can get better from it, like, great, good for you. But, you know, on, on the on the end of someone who's just kind of transitioning into the idea of potentially being a competitor, that that's also a little bit okay, right? Because you're basically just learning. You're just using that as information because, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there, but you don't necessarily have the filter to understand what makes sense or what doesn't make sense or what works for you or what doesn't work for you. And just even being in the environment where you're doing that stuff, I think is actually super, super valuable because then you get the experience to understand, like, like, oh, okay, this is what it feels like to try to do this much training. This is what it feels like to, you know, just throw down with friends for hours per day on the weekend. This is what it feels like to try to do a workout with a weight that I can't possibly even consider lifting, right? That you, you just need to have some of those experiences to have a framework to even process what's going on. So I think it's okay for people to do that, provided that they're, they're treating it more as like learning and information and that they're able to then, you know, not just continue to push themselves, like I said before, where it's like, oh, this isn't going well. Well, that means I need to try harder and do more, which isn't necessarily the case, right? If you're if you're sort of new and you're like, this isn't going well, you know, that, that that's maybe a cue that you need to figure out what's actually going on and be a little bit more deliberate with how you're doing things. But, you know, you, you do have to just sort of expose yourself to stuff so that you have even the ability to understand what you should and shouldn't be doing. I think on that as well, it's, it's worth thinking about the the reasons why people are doing their training. So for some people, the idea of doing competitions, um, it's more about the throwing down with friends, challenging themselves a little bit. It's not necessarily about absolute peak performance. Um, and for those type of people, like, okay, maybe it's, maybe you're not doing the optimal work for you, but you're enjoying it. You're, you're working hard and that's, and maybe that's enough for them. Yeah. And John, sorry to interrupt, but I think that that's actually a phase that people move through on the way to deciding that they want to work on peak performance, right? That the person yeah. who's like, yeah. I want to do everything the exactly correct way and maximize per my performance. And I'm going to listen to my coach and not be a fucking idiot. Like that person is extremely exceptionally rare that a lot of people move through this phase of being like, I'm just throwing down with my friends. I don't care that much. I want to do this competition and get my ass kicked and have a good time. And then they realize that they're actually pretty good at it and it's kind of yeah. fun and they want to take it more seriously, but they don't have the information to understand what that even means until they kind of go through that phase of just sort of like being a reckless throw down yeah. happy meathead. And, and I think some people won't, don't ever get past that phase, you know? Some people will go through that phase and progress on to a more structured and focused and well thought out plan. Other people will get there and stick there and maybe to the point where they hurt themselves and they stop, maybe to the point where they, they realize that it's just too much training or they feel beat up all the time and then they just back off rather than push through to the more kind of intelligent plan as it were. And then it's also, and, and it's okay for people to stay there. They don't necessarily need to right. progress to like a more serious, you know, position. I mean, and I think all of us coach people who are kind of in that phase as well, right? And the, you, you know, some of the people are not, they don't actually care that much about doing the absolute best thing for them. But as a coach, you know, you're sort of in this in-between spot of like, okay, you're not super, super serious about this. You're not a sponsored athlete. It's a fun hobby for you and you want to get your ass kicked all the time. So let's figure out a way to get you what you're looking for from the sport 
in a more intelligent way that isn't necessarily like, oh, well, your shoulder mobility isn't any good. So you're just going to spend two years, you know, doing bike erg intervals and like rib cage positioning drills until you get in a proper snatch position. Cause they're just not going to do that. And I, th- I think part of that is as a coach being able to help them figure out what they want and figuring out what they need to do to, to make that happen. So yeah, know, because- listening to, listening to what they're saying in terms of the feedback on workouts and it's like, okay, do you, do you actually want to do a competition or do you just think you should? Yeah, because I would say, I think uh, now it's a little bit different, but definitely a couple of years ago, it was almost the sort of idea of if you're going to compete and you're going to sort of take this seriously to some extent, then your goal is regionals or your goal is, you know, something quite big uh, and grandiose where like the, uh, the picking for that is really, really small and the chances of making it are really, really small. Um, you know, like, and, and I think that... <clears throat> I would say that uh, even some people who have been in it for quite a long time, you know, they the the uh, the goal if you were competing was at the time going to be regionals or it was going to be some big competition, and then they end up just sort of like going through the the the, the motions and going through that groove and potentially taking the sport a little bit more seriously than they they may actually want to like deep down, right? And I think that this is um, this is one thing that happens quite often is that there's sort of this expectation that if you're going to create goals in something right then you have to aim big or you have to aim high and that's not necessarily the case and i think that um you know if you want to take something seriously it doesn't necessarily have to be reflected through your goals and you can just have fun taking something seriously you know you don't have to have these huge goals just to hire a coach you know take care of your body get regular body work um you know maybe hire a nutrition coach doing all those things like you can just enjoy the process of just working on something um and i think that one of the things that i see is is that you know sometimes you sort of see it is that people this may be getting a little bit off tangent um but sometimes people are almost made to sort of feel guilty for how seriously they're taking things by others um who maybe may just have a little bit more of a black and white view of things of like you're in it just to have fun and you throw down, you don't really care what you're doing for your program and you know, whatever, or you take it seriously, you hire a remote coach and you do this and this and this and this, and you can have a nice in between space where you have fun taking things seriously and you have fun, um, you know, exploring your, uh, your fitness through this competitive endeavor and you, do you, you try you want to do things properly or you want to do things a little bit more efficiently and a little bit more um textbook correctly yeah luke i think that your point about um people kind of uh circling in on the the regionals goal when that was a thing is really insightful i think we've potentially talked about that before when the the season changed to focus on sanctionals which is that previously during the regionals era it was realistic for someone who is a pretty good athlete, but not super, super dedicated to be a regionals competitor on a team at their local affiliate or whatever, which I actually think was potentially somewhat negative for a lot of those people, right? Because it was a, a pretty high level competition. And then a lot of people didn't necessarily have the actual infrastructure in their life or the the training resilience or whatever to be able to have that be something that should be you know a, a goal for them right that it was just like beating them down essentially and that for a lot of those folks you know the the ability to say okay you know what the the top tier of competition is mostly occupied by people who are the genetic elite who are dedicating their lives to this sport. And I think that's actually good to create more separation between like, you know what, you you are not going to be, you know, whatever, playing in the EPL. Like it's just not going to happen. But that has nothing to do with whether or not you want to play rec league soccer a few nights a week. You know, that, that, that being able to separate that, I think is really important for people. Um, and I'm hopeful that, the you know, as CrossFit switches leadership and as the, the competition season continues to evolve, it sounds like that's something that, you know, they're, they're aware of and are trying to focus on is like, how do we make 
competitions available to people in a way that isn't necessarily as serious, but does have, you know, the potential ability for them to experience something resembling high level competition that isn't like, okay, you have to be, you know, like I said before, the genetic elite who's dedicating your life to the sport. And if you try to do it on top of your normal job and whatever else, you're just going to turn yourself into a hormonal catastrophe in 18 months. Yeah, there's definitely, I I definitely know of some people who sort of just fallen into the trap of you know my goal is regionals or my goal is to make it on a team or whatever and 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 uh they end up just actually just getting burnt out by it and then just being like okay i just don't want to do this at all you know because there's just so much um that there's just like negative connotation with the activity itself or whatever um but yeah hopefully as the sport does progress there is going to be some sort of uh dissemination down from the top of like okay well this is what we you know we're trying to sort of achieve with this uh you know, uh, competition. And I, and I know, I know with, uh, um, was it the IF3? Like I know that they, there's some sanctioning process that's going through and, you know, and that might be something that comes about where people, um, you know, have just a little bit more of an idea of, okay, well, this is what the, the expectations are. Um, because I think, because that, that way training as well can match and training can be intelligent and it, it's not all just, uh, you know, I, and I mentioned this a couple of podcasts ago, it's just not a mini version of the CrossFit Games where you got people who are trying to squat snatch and falling over with 25 kilos in their hand. It's like, if you're falling over 25 kilos squat snatch, you shouldn't be just it's like, <laughs> let's, let's, let's grab a dumbbell, right? Let's, let's, let's do something which, you know, uh, as, uh, as James Fitzgerald says, do something that they can actually express. Yeah, that that is something that I do. I know I said I had some things that I disagreed with James on previously in this podcast, but that's something I really agree with him on is the idea of creating a fitness competition that people can participate in and express their actual, you know, whatever performance capacity in that isn't like you said, just like, okay, you want to do a local throwdown? Well, the RX division is doing, you know, ring muscle ups and deadlifts at 315. And the scaled version is just going to be like, some variation of that that kind of doesn't make any sense and it's like well you know what you could have people go for a run and like try to do a certain amount of push-ups with some strict form requirements and it doesn't need to be something that like looks like the crossfit games or whatever so that's that's something that i do hope we i do hope we see coming coming down the pipeline Thanks for listening. While you're here, go ahead and head over to your podcast player, subscribe to the show, give it a rating, give it a review, all that good stuff. You can also go ahead and click through to the show notes where you can find out more about us at legionsc.com and also follow us on Instagram at legion.sc.